and laughs in all that I create. Weighted blankets are heavy blankets that are said to have a calming effect for those with sensory processing disorders, anxiety, and autism. I'm not a therapist or medical professional, so I can't make any claims about whether a weighted blanket will be beneficial for you or your child. But if you'd like to try one, I can show you how to make your own. These blankets can cost hundreds of dollars online, but this child size blanket cost me a total of $30 to make. You'll need enough fabric for the front and back of your blanket. You can make a blanket in any size, however I think it's a good idea to make it large enough to comfortably cover the person it's intended for without a great deal of excess fabric. This will ensure that most of the weight is lying directly on the person. You can make this out of any fabric, but my first choice is fleece. Its heavy weight equals more durability and less strain on seams. You can also use minky, however be aware that minky is rather slippery to sew with, so fleece is an easier option to work with. You'll also need plastic poly pellets, which are similar to what's inside of Beanie Babies. You can machine wash the blanket and tumble dry on low with no problems. The retail price at craft stores is around $5 a pound. However, many craft chains have coupons on their apps, so you can get the pellets for up to half off. The standard weight for a blanket is 10% of the person's body weight, plus one pound. If the individual has a high BMI, base this calculation on the ideal body weight for that person's age and height. Start by layering the fabrics right sides together. Pin the left and right sides. We're going to start sewing about 2 inches from the top because that will make it easier to fold the edge inward later. Sew down the long left and right sides with a half inch seam, stopping 2 inches from the bottom. Leave the top and bottom sides open. Turn the blanket right side out. Since you can't iron, fleece, or minky, roll the seams between your fingers to define them. Next, we'll top stitch the seams together. This will help close up the inside seam so beads don't get trapped in there or work their way out of the blanket. Fold the loose 2 inches at the top and bottom inward. Top stitch with a quarter inch seam. Now we need to draw grid lines so we can sew the pockets. Each pocket will be filled with an equal amount of plastic pellets. I like to keep my pockets between 4 and 6 inches so that the individual pockets aren't holding a great deal of weight. For this blanket, I'm spacing my lines 5 inches apart. Use a piece of chalk or a water soluble fabric marking pen. Here's what my marked columns look like. Turn the bottom and top edges of the blanket inward and pin shut along the marked lines. This will keep your fabric from shifting and will make it easier to find your marks as you're sewing. Sew directly along the marked lines to create columns. Now mark your horizontal lines. These pockets can be squares or rectangles, just try to make the rows consistent in size. It doesn't really matter whether you mark from the front or the back. Sew only the horizontal line in the middle right now. We'll sew one row at a time, working outward from the center. We want an equal amount of pellets in each pocket. Divide the total ounces of pellets you have by the number of pockets you have, then use a kitchen scale to divide the pellets. Or use a measuring cup to figure out how many pellets are in a single bag, then figure out how much will fit in each pocket. Insert the wrapping paper tube into the pocket and push it down to the center seam. Pour in the correct amount of pellets. 
you may find a funnel helpful. Repeat until each column has been filled with an equal amount of pellets. Sew the next marked line to close the row of pockets. As you sew, smooth the fabric to make sure no pellets pass that marked line. If you hit one of these, your needle will likely break, so make sure the pellets are pushed where they belong. These blankets can be heavy and awkward to work with. It helps to have an extension table on your sewing machine and a large table as your work surface. If you have a walking foot for your sewing machine, that might be useful too. Continue to fill and sew the rows on both sides of that first center seam. I don't, 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 don't feel afraid to innovate. Don't, 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 don't miss a chance to be creative. Don't, 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 why don't I try this at home? Try this at home. Finally, sew the top and bottom rows with a quarter inch seam, making sure the fabric is folded inward and aligned nicely. I also inserted my business tag in the bottom corner of the last pocket. I hope you found this video helpful. For written instructions, visit madebymarzipan.com. Try this at home.